Samuel Slater, the father of the American Industrial Revolution, was born on June 9, 1768. Samuel was the son of a yeoman farmer, and at a young age Samuel went to work as an apprentice for the owner of a cotton mill. He later became superintendent of that mill and became very familiar with the machines designed by Richard Arkwright. Slater arrived in America in 1789 with the knowledge of how the textile machines worked, but because British law prohibited textile workers to share technology information and or leave the country, he said he was a farmer and headed to New York with his working papers hidden in his pocket. Slater opened this mill in 1790, financed by Quaker merchant no Moses Brown. This is one of the first cases of industrial espionage. This was also the first water-powered mill in the United States. Slater built America's first water-powered cotton spinning mill in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. The mill was shut down in 1895 and restored in 1923. As a young man living in England, Slater learned that in America, cash prizes were being awarded to people who could invent improvements to America's textile industry. Having worked at a mill, he knew a lot about the business, and he was very familiar with the machines designed by Richard Arkwright. So in 1789, Samuel Slater left for America. After offering his services to Moses Brown in Rhode Island, he arrived in Pawtucket in 1790 and set to work building textile machinery, and by the end of that year had built carding, drawing, and roving machines. The American spinning industry was born, and a water-powered mill was built in 1793. A few years later, another mill was built, and then in 1806, yet another. By 1809, spinning mills were in operation around the country, firmly establishing the industry. Historians credit him with creating a system of tenant farms around his mills in an effort to move and find work for entire families. And it was illegal for any, of the, any kind of knowledge like that to leave England. They were still a little annoyed because we won that Revolutionary War. And they didn't want it. They didn't. They wanted us to keep trading with them because if we developed our own textile, first we revolted from them and became our own country. What happens if we don't trade with them anymore? We already have our own textile industry going. But Sam Slater, knowing that he's not going to be able to get to the position he wants to with the strut mill because they're out three sons, decides I'm going to go. I'm going to try and make it in America. He sews in his, his apprentice papers in his sleeves, and that's a, that's kind of like your evidence, like a diploma now that he knows what he's talking about. But as far as people thinking, I, and I think you agree with me with the technology that he, the, he had it like hidden and written down and he stole it over, I think a good analogy is if you're a lawyer and you have the, you know, you know the law inside and out. If you go, if you switch from a law firm, you're not gonna get, you're not stealing, you know you just happen to have that knowledge. And that was Sam Slater. He grew up around, surrounded by this kind of textile knowledge, this awkward machinery, this all this stuff that we didn't have here. Slater created a factory system called the Rhode Island system based on the customary patterns in the New England villages. Children aged seven to twelve were the first employees of the mill. Slater personally supervised them. The first children workers were hired in 1790. The Rhode Island system was essentially a system that moved families off the farm and into company-owned boarding houses located near the mill. They shopped at company stores and went to company schools. Slater and his brother then opened a mi mill village in 1803, which they called Slatersville, located on the Branch River in present-day North Smithfield, Rhode Island. By 1807, the village included the Slatersville Mill, the largest and most industrial building of its day, two tenant houses for the workers, the owner's house, and the company store. In 1826, the mill was destroyed in the fire and replaced with the one you see here. Behind the mill shown is a smaller mill built in 1843. Slater died in 1835 at the age of 67 in Webster, Massachusetts. He will always be remembered as the father of the American Industrial Revolution.